The Prophet, peace be upon him, he's just achieved revelation and the first words came down, the first verses came down and he was at the top of the mount and at the same time, because of him being hugged so tight, embraced, so to speak, he rushed down that mountain. Where did he go? He wanted to relate this most important event in his life to someone. He wanted to relate it to someone. Who do I go to? Think about it. Every one of us here. If you had something extremely important that just happened to you, who would you relate it to? Who would be the first person you thought of? Where would you go? Many of us, we would not go to our spouses. They would be the last people to know. The world has changed, right? And if we did go to our spouses, they'd probably say, we deserve it. Yeah. You know, didn't they scare you to death or something? That's what we would say. Subhanallah. That's how we have actually degraded ourselves. Whereas if we were true followers of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we would learn something from the fact that as he ran down, the first person he embraced was this wife of his, 15 years older, senior. He had all his children from her besides one. All of them were from her. Subhanallah. And he comes down, he says, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, you know, give me that hug. I need a tight hug. Subhanallah. I've just translated it into our language, right? How many of us, when we feel that we need some form of reassurance, we would go to our spouse and say, give me that hug. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I don't want to actually harp on how we have become, but I'm sure each one of us knows we have a lot of work to do. How close are you to your spouse? Make an effort. Many men and even women try to impress those whom they're not even related to and their own spouses are looking out for any form of attention and it's not coming. Subhanallah. And we call ourselves Muslim. We call ourselves followers of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. What an insult we are sometimes. You have to work hard on your relations. You have to work very, very hard if you would like to truly be a follower of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So he comes to Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha. He embraces her. He relates what happened. You know what she says? She knows the man is such a brilliant man. He's honest. He's trustworthy. He helps people. He fulfills his, his duty more than the duty. He looks after the widows and the orphans. She says, Kalla wallahi la Allahu abadan. Nay, never. Impossible. Allah will never ever let you down. You know why? You are such a good man. Many men out here tonight, can your spouses say you're such a good man? Wow. Would they say you're such a good man? And if they did, I think it would not be. Unless you were present there saying, yeah, talk about me. Yeah, let's hear what you got to say. Very good man, really excellent, lovely person, etc. Why? Because you're standing there. Would your spouse be able to say you're a good man in your absence? If that is the case, the same messenger tells us, خيركم, خيركم The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. The term Ahl starts off with wife and then it goes on to your family members. So if you are the best to your family members, you are said to be the best of all of us. And then he caps that by saying, and I'm the best from all of you to my family. Wow. That's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said. You see this beginning of Nubuwa. The wife says, Allah will never let you down because you're a good man. You fulfill all of the good things. You look after widows and orphans. You look after the neighbors. You reach out to your family, etc., etc. You... If you don't do any evil, how can Allah let you down? Once a companion, the Prophet, peace be upon him, pointed towards him and told the other companions, 
If you want to see a person from heaven, you see this man. So he was followed by one of the companions. And later on, when he explained what his extra deeds were, he actually said, there's not much. There's not much of extra things that I do. After Salat al-Isha, he went off to sleep and he got up for Salat al-Fajr. I would expect and you would expect, just like the rest of the companions expected that perhaps this man is so holy, so pious, that he must be getting up when everyone is asleep and quietly worshipping Allah, which is a very, very powerful deed indeed. So when he searched a little bit more into his deeds, there was that special deed that was found, which is better than engaging in ibadah through the entire night. What is it? Remove the hatred in your heart from others or of others. Wallahi, do you know why? It is more difficult than anything. Today we hate our own brothers, one mother, one father, our uncles, our aunts. We cannot find it in our hearts to forgive a spouse who has erred. Your husband made a mistake. Today, we are taught by the environment that that mistake needs to be dealt with in a way that we just get a divorce. Whereas Allah put you there to help your spouse. Yes, if it is something major, you might want to deal with it in a bigger way. Someone has abused you physically in a bad way. You have every right to seek protection and you should. And you can opt to terminate that marriage. But I'm talking of the petties of today. I've heard of a case a few years back where there was a wedding. Some of you might have heard me say this before. And at the function, the husband tells, you know, he's a groom, basically new. He tells his newly wedded wife, he says, can you pass me the salad? You know, the salad. It was a round table. She said, you can get it yourself. That must be training, you know, day one. Some of her friends might have told her, you know what, just make sure that you don't give the guy the impression that you're going to do everything he says at his beck and call. But well, anyway, listen to what happened, the true story. He says, what do you mean? Pass it. She says, I don't want. Well, then you're divorced. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I think a lot of you would not even believe that. But it's happening because we no longer value our relationships. We don't. My brothers and sisters, Ramadan is there to build relations, to think about where you are. And the building of a relationship requires both parties, not just one. Imagine your neighbor has a right. That right starts off when he is not a Muslim. They have a right. They're not a Muslim. Why do they have a right? Because it is an honor for you that you have a neighbor who's not a Muslim so that you can showcase the beauty of this faith. Minimum is the hatred of that person towards Islam will be minimized. That's the minimum. Because people have a perception. They don't know. They probably just watch telly. They might hear from the media. They see things going on in the name of religion that don't belong to the religion. And what happens? They develop this perception. You and I are given the opportunity to work on it. But what do we do? We don't greet. We don't talk. We don't interact. We don't send some food or a gift or a card or something of that nature to those who are our neighbors because we say well they're not Muslim do you know your religion when they're not Muslim you should be taking care of that right when they're a Muslim it becomes a double right when they're related to you it becomes a triple right when they're Muslim and related to you it's a quadruple right but it still means that that non-Muslim neighbor of yours has a right a right to what to your kind neighborhood neighborliness you've got to be a neighbor and you've got to be a kind good neighbor such that if they were to leave on a holiday or you were to go it would be good for them to trust you to say you know what we're not going to be here for a week can you just keep an eye if your neighbors can tell you that as non-muslims inshallah you're heading somewhere you're getting somewhere and if you could tell them that you know what, we're not going to be here for a week. Can you keep an eye? They say, don't worry, we'll keep an eye. Subhanallah. 
How good a relationship is that? Guidance is in the hands of the Almighty. My job and yours is not to convert anyone. The conversion is in the hands of Allah. The reversion is in the hands of Allah. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You will not guide whomsoever you wish, but it's Allah who guides whomsoever He wishes. But, مَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغ Our duty is only to convey. I've conveyed. I've been the best I can. In Ramadan, many of us say that we don't eat or drink, not realizing that there is far more to the fast than that. مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلَ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whoever does not abandon that bad, false, deceptive, hurtful, abusive speech and acting upon it, acting in an abusive way, a bad way, a deceptive way, in a rotten way basically, then Allah says, you're wasting your time staying away from food and drink. We don't need the fact that you abstained from food and drink. The reward for you is nothing besides hunger and thirst. Just like if you were to stand at night for long hours, or you were to read salah, your prayer. But I want to tell you, there are people who fulfill their salah, they fulfill their prayer, they full stand in the night, they read the Quran, they do a lot, but their tongues are bad, their expressions are dirty, they are abusive in their own homes to their own spouses, they don't take care of their children, they don't spend time with their children. Why did you have those kids? Why did you get married if you didn't want to spend time with your wife, your husband, your children? Why did you waste time getting married? Messing someone's life up. You have to make the time. It's an act of worship. But if you are or anyone is dirty in their actions and their words, abusive, hurtful, deceptive, they've stolen, they cheat, they harm, they attack. In that case, even the hadith says that this person is rewarded with nothing besides having wasted their time and effort and energy and having suffered lack of sleep for nothing. لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا التَّعَبُ وَالسَّهَرُ How many of the people they are, they achieve nothing from standing in prayer all night except getting tired and loss of sleep. Because there's something else wrong in your machine. I have a Mercedes. Your body and mine is far greater than a Mercedes. It's more sophisticated. But I promise you, we have the liver, we have the kidneys, we have the heart, we have the eyes, we have the nose, we have the ears. If any one of those organs is to fail, we have failed. We are more sophisticated. When 0.1 grams of some deed is in the wrong place, wrong time, you also start shuddering, subhanallah. You don't realize. You're wasting your time. So Ramadan is here to look at every aspect. Be careful if someone were to ask me what is Ramadan all about, I will tell them it is to achieve holistic God consciousness. Because the Quran says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you who believe, Fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was upon those before you in order that you achieve taqwa. Taqwa means the consciousness of Allah. I've become more conscious of my maker. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where am I right now? Where am I heading? And what is my relationship with all of those around me? Subhanallah. The minute you look at where you came from, where you are and where you're heading, it will improve your relationship with Allah. The minute you look at the, at the rest of the creatures of the same Allah, it will improve your relationship with mankind. Those are the two things that will take you to heaven. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about people who will enter Jannah, we want to know their qualities, those who are going to go to paradise. Tell us what are their qualities. Do you know what he said? He said, Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. There are two things that take people to heaven. Consciousness of Allah, and the greatness of your character and conduct. My brothers and sisters, ask yourself, how conscious are you of Allah? How conscious am I? We can do more, inshallah.
كتاب الله ترقى جنانه وتنى العظيم الأجر والغفران رتله روى القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان